वैराग्य विद्या निज भक्ति योगा शिक्षार्थ में पुरुष पुराना श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य शरीर धारी कृपा बुद्धिम प्रपद्ये मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंगे ते गिरी यद कृपा तम हम बंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारणम वाचा कल्पतरु बच कृपा सिंधु व्यय पति तम पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवासादि गौर भक्त विंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सीक योर ब्लेसिंग्स प्रे फॉर योर ब्लेसिंग्स एंड प्रे द जेनुअनली नॉट जस्ट इन वर्ड्स इन रियलिटी जेनुअनली I become the first listener of what we discuss from Shrimad Bhagavatam. Thank you very much for your ever kind tolerance and acceptance and kind love and with your blessings we continue studying Shrimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> See Shrimad Bhagavatam, how should it be studied? what is shrimad bhagavatam it is glorification of devotees it is glorification of bhakti it is glorification of the lordships now when we are discussing about the lordships shrimad bhagavatam should be discussed in an assembly of devotees in such a manner so much of exalted say manner and glorification that the deities walk forward to listen to it <coughs> is it not generally in our conditioned sabha se assembly when we discuss some subject matter pertaining to say ourselves our eyes a bit stand up ears a bit stand up is not and okay let me just take let, let me just take a step forward and listen what's going on so this is how like shrimad bhagavatam our acharyas and all that uh, it is okay it is all about the mood all about the mood now japa how should japa be done japa is a call it's a cry it's a prayer but japa should be done in such a mood is in such a call it such a cry in such a prayer heartfelt cry mood prayer that when the curtains open we take the ashan of the lord ships it's like such a transcendental mood right doing japa uh, in the temple room devotees doing japa and the pujari dressing the deities and all so like glorification and dressing going on at the same time same hmm. so complimenting each other everything and the cook preparing uh, breakfast and when the curtains open we take direct darshan so it is this is shrimad bhagavatam helping us to understand uh, krishna consciousness what is krishna consciousness to build a mood to build the right attitude to build the proper attitude the proper understanding now very quickly say we'll try to go through the past time a bit uh, so uh, we see once upon a time king chitraketu he was uh, wanting a son and he was very restless he was very dissatisfied that i don't have a son uh, i have a what a 1 million wives two 10 million wives <clears throat> not in thousands i don't think so i have i have one 10 million wives hmm? but no son no single son so he was very dissatisfied he wanted a son but at that point in time he was not in a position to take the transcendental message so never mind uh, angira muni and uh, narad muni blessed him with a son and fine later on the son was called harsha shoka and the son the um, other co wives uh, 9 million plus wives they were uh, a bit envious mm. and in their not able to retain or sustain their jealousy or envi- enviousness they 
poison the child. And then Narad Muni, Angira Muni again came into light and they consoled the king. They gave them the transcendental message and king was able to take on the transcendental message. And then king practiced Krishna consciousness with very one-pointed attention. He got the Ashan, Narad Muni initiated him, gave him the mantra. And the king started practicing more fervently Krishna consciousness. And he got the Ashan of his lordship as well. And now he, with blessings, he's traveling to the heavenly planets uh, in the airplane with, uh, with the other as, with the other is woman and glorifying the lordships. And coming to uh, uh, traveling, say, in the outer sky, he sees uh, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva in an assembly of Bhagavat assembly discussing Sh Sriman Bhagavatam with Mother Parvati on his lap. And they have a bit of a slight joke. They have a bit of a slight banter, say. Mm -hmm. Nothing malice in it. No ill intention. Nothing Like in society, we say something in a, oh, I was just joking. I was just slight joke and banter. But inside we mean it. That I was trying to say that you are wrong. I'm better than you. I'm superior to you. Inside there is this, there is this feeling that, oh no, I, I'm better. I know more. Be at work, be at family, be at relationships. Um, I know. But in this instance, there was no malice involved. King Chitraketu and Lord Shiva as well. <clears throat> so King Chitraketu make, made a comment, a remark, or just a smile, or looked a bit at Lord Shiva. Oh, wow, this is good, huh? And something uh, on those lines. And the Lord Shiva also kind of looked. They both had an eye to eye contact. And Mother Parvati could not understand this, could not take it in the proper spirit, or she could not get it. Uh, and she cursed uh, King Chitraketu. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> for us, it is Bhagavatam is full of learnings and full of teachings to imbibe, to imbibe and build up a mood. Uh, one of the thing is what? Uh, not be critical. Now, this critical is a very dangerous thing, or it's very, how do we understand critical as well? What does it mean to be not be critical? Say? So in, in this instance, we see Mother Parvati, she got critical and <laughs> she couldn't see in life, uh, an educated person in life, one has to be, have to be educated and an educated person, he assesses the conditions, situations very nicely. That is the point of education that, okay, you are too tuned into the reality very nicely. And somewhere in this instance, Mother Parvati struggled to, couldn't assess or tune into the situation very clearly. Assess the situation, the reality very clearly. Say. And again, it is for us only. The teachings and learnings is for me only. So how can we be more in tune with reality? How can we more assess the situation as it is, as they are? And everything is in my favor. Everyone and everything is helping me, favoring me to become a pure devotee of Krishna. How can that be done? As it says in the purport, Narayana Parasarve Na Kutaschana Vibhyati. One who is sheltered, he will be driven by the super soul from inside and externally by instructions from devotees, by instructions from Guru Maharaj, he will be driven yeah, and he will understand the situation. So in here, <clears throat> struggle to a bit understand the situation, the reality, the crux or uh, the, the nerve of the situation. Say. A question, <clears throat> what is the best way to win an argument? How best to always win an argument? Just see how best to always. It says, no, the translation says, uh, as the standard behavior of a Vaishnava. This is very much to be appreciated as the standard behavior of a Vaishnava. Uh, we'll come to the question also, what is the best way to an always win an argument? 
stay out of it. Very nice. Yes, bro. To side with the other person, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. So yes, <clears throat> when we do not go into the argument, an argument might have started, but we do not participate in it. We do not entertain the argument. We do not go further with it. We do not carry on with the argument. Then the other person, our best is what? To side with the other person. Then the when we side with the other party in the argument, the party has lost, even though seemingly won the argument. Seemingly won the argument, but lost the argument. And see here, King Chitra Ketu. He did not enter into the argument he did not go into that argument he stood away from the argument and he sided with the mother parvati yes mother you are correct you are very correct <laughs> seemingly what appears okay mother parvati won right the curse came into effect the curse came into being uh, it's true it has it ha occurred but actually who won <clears throat> One thing, practicing Krishna consciousness, what would we like to say? Where would we want to put ourselves? I almost lost or I almost won. I almost lost or I almost won. Almost lost. That should be our attitude. <clears throat> that should be our material world means what? Sense gratification, material life means what? Almost won. Almost made it. Almost won. Never won. Almost won. But in Krishna consciousness, Mahaprabhu is so unattainable. Until and unless we experience this oh mahaprabhu you are beyond me the unattainable a sadhaka he should feel this glani he should feel this remorse that i am so sinful i'm so terribly sinful how can i possibly enter the temple conservatory look at my audacity how can i possibly enter the temple room how can I be in such close vicinity of such exalted Vaishnavas? So this, this remorse, this genuine has to come from inside. Then we can prepare our mood in bhajan, in practicing Krishna consciousness, in japa, in reading, hearing, chanting, everything. And a sadhaka like, okay, I almost lost, means there won't be any pride in us then. Lust is one thing, and physical lust is one thing. More heavy is pride. More heavy is pride. And us practicing Krishna consciousness, we shouldn't be carrying any pride. No. Our pride is what Radha Krishna is our pride. That should be our real pride. So in here, King Chitra Ketu, he did not enter into an argument. This is the standard behavior of a Vaishnava. He did not go into the argument. He stood away from it. He did not entertain the argument. And we see it many other places. Like comes to my mind in ninth canto, chapter one, two, three, four, chapter four, predominantly, we see Ambarish Maharaj and Durvasa Muni's pastime. Their sweet interaction, right? Now, <clears throat> um, Durvasa Muni. Out being insulted, being feeling insulted, Durvasa Muni pricks a demon from his hair, right? Matted hair and throws it and sends it to kill uh, Ambarish Maharaj. Now Ambarish Maharaj, upon seeing the demon come through and all, how many steps did he take back to defend himself? None. No retaliation, no justification. This is not the standard behavior of a sadhaka of a Vaishnava to retaliate, to justify, 
to confront is not at all the behavior of a Vaishnava. To go into an argument, to be confrontational, no. This does not suit at all. <clears throat> so we see how many steps did Ambarish Maharaj take back? None. He was firm in his ground. He was uh, there, yes, accepting. He accepted, okay, fine. I accept this Brahmana's decision. Whatever this Brahmana is giving to me, I accept it. And as the, that pastime unfolds, how many steps did Durvasa Muni take then? Hmm? When <clears throat> this is the Narayana Parasarve, na? na kutaschana bibyati. How many steps did Durvasa Muni take then? We cannot count how many steps did he take. What happened as that pastime unfolded? Na, uh, the demon came to kill uh, Ambarish Maharaj, but Ambarish Maharaj did not retire yet. So the internal energy of Krishna, yes, Ambarish is humble, Ambarish is flexible. He's not taking things in his hand. He's letting Krishna work. He's wanting, okay, Krishna, whatever you prefer, whatever you desire, what is your desire? So the Yogamaya Shakti of Krishna cannot see this uh, injustice happening. Sir. Hmm? Cannot see. So then Sudarshan Chakra came about and the demon was killed. And then the Sudarshan Chakra went to greet Durvasamuni. Went to meet Durvasamuni, went to greet Durvasamuni. Hmm? Oh, were you saying something, Durvasamuni? And Durvasamuni couldn't stand there. He couldn't resist the the gentle warmth or the heat of the Sudarshan Chakra. And we don't know how many steps, even the treadmill could have struggled to count how many steps or calories he might have burned. Say. <clears throat> this is the power of surrender. A conditioned soul messes it up when he takes things in his hand, when he takes matters in his hand. Why do we have Shastras? Why do we have Sadhus? Why do we have spiritual master? So that I can take things in my own hand? No. We want to be driven. We want to be driven. This is Narayana Parasarve. This is Trinadapi Sunichena. This is real humility to consider oneself lower than a straw in the street. Um, King Chitra Ketu. He did not justify, he did not tell to Mother Parvati that you are correct or not correct, no. Now, <clears throat> last year, uh, around Radha Ashtmi time, Karuna Bhavan hosted, facilitated, facilitated this course, right? Philosophy, Culture and Etiquette. Hmm? We had this course, Philosophy, Culture and Etiquette. Another question comes to me. Of this Philosophy, Culture and Etiquette, what is the most important element sir? for us practicing Krishna consciousness sadhakas? What is the most important? Philo is it philosophy, culture, or etiquette, or are all equally important? Etiquette? Okay. <clears throat> we'll think on this and maybe see you know, philosophy, culture, and etiquette. What is the most important? And throughout our life is grained with philosophy, culture, and etiquette only. <clears throat> bhakti, where does bhakti begin from? When we come out of the shell of right and wrong. If I'm stuck in the shell of right and wrong, I cannot perform bhakti then. I cannot perform loving devotional service, pure devotional service. Bhakti is not about, bhakti is beyond right and wrong. And throughout Srimad Bhagavatam, starting from first canto till 12th canto, Parikshit Maharaj, beyond right and wrong. Huh? Sukhdev Goswami, Vyas Devji, everyone beyond right and wrong. Pandavas, Arjuna, beyond right and wrong. Hmm? 
फर्दर ऑन मदर देवहूति कपिल देव ध्रुव महाराज एवरी वन एंड ऑल पार्टिसिपेटिंग एवरी बियॉन्ड राइट एंड रॉन्ग सो भक्ति इज बियॉन्ड राइट एंड रॉन्ग एंड इफ आई एम स्टक इन गुड एंड बैड और राइट एंड रॉन्ग for a sadhaka in order to deserve the kingdom of godhead of course we deserve it we we deserve it it is our rightful claim say first of all thing is we have to become undeserving we have to realize that i am undeserving if i do not realize this if i do not completely fully accept this acknowledge this that i am undeserving then i won't deserve it i won't deserve it this is the paradox if i do not trinada api suniche na purport says na if i do not wear this properly the garland of humility the garland of tolerance the garland of patience then the kingdoms of heaven the kingdoms of transcendental realm won't be open so we are yes we are the rightful heir or we have the rightful claim but we need to understand what is it that makes us rightful what is it that makes us rightful there has to be some credential right someone born in england born in scotland someone just cannot walk up to the passport office and say okay give me a passport i don't speak proper english i speak the english as is as it is spoken in uk you can see so give me the passport you can see by my english so someone can walk up an englishman a scottish person can walk up to the passport office and say, but is it good enough no the passport well no even though okay fine you might be born in just prove some some kind okay then what is required who is your father who is your father and can you prove that okay and then your passport is there so likewise for us as well in order for us to have that claim say the rightful claim we need to understand what is my rights what are my rights what is my responsibilities and when i live by it when i practice by it when i follow by it and all then the doors are already open the doors are not at all locked do we think that the doors of vaikunth are locked and we need an appointment or a door bell rings okay now can you the doors are open they are wide open they are wide open but problem is i am thick headed that is the problem there is no door in fact there is no door why why there has to be a door in goloka vrindavan what is the scarcity or what is the worry here we have doors in our houses alarms and security alarms and so many things right because uh, the society we do not trust and all and okay and also for weather wise we want to keep ourselves warm and all even i think in india and i'm sure in uk and american places if you see 50 60 years ago or 100 years ago to 200 years ago people wouldn't be locking their homes uh like even night time just close the door but not locking their homes and all and the community the society neighbors there would be more exchanges and more dialogues and all and anyways for the doors of the kingdom of the doors to open they are already open they are not at all locked but i am locked in my consciousness and i need to unlock myself when i unlock myself i will understand oh there is nothing like uh, bondage and there is no like liberation as well for me <clears throat> so this is and the beginning point is what coming to a sense of uh be adjusting not just adjusting be accepting also not just like mentally or intellectually coming to a natural kind of a position of whatever it is good krishna consciousness is all good right so if i'm practicing krishna consciousness then whatever comes to me is all good this is the standard behavior of a vaishnava this is the mood <coughs> king chitraketu is carrying 
that whatever is coming is a blessing whatever is coming is all good and he's accepting it he did not think much there was not much of a mental process or intellectual calculation going on <clears throat> so this has to come quite natural to us and see for us the real thing is glorifying the devotion of devotees how much can we glorify king chitraketu's hmm, surrender his mood how much can we glorify vaishnavas and how much can we glorify the presently present vaishnavas that is vaishnavism glorifying the devotee of devotee uh, devotion of devotees then yog maya will pick us up yes okay is getting the right behavior the standard behavior of a vaishnava <clears throat> so <clears throat> life similar to this no? when does life begin genuine life begins when we come out of this shell of good and bad it's not like life begins okay when we were born and started going to school and started eating or you know life has begun or genuine life begins when i actually come out of this shell of good and bad uh, stuck in this <clears throat> see this is the difference in school at least um, like i went through and i'm sure all of us would have gone through in school there is this moral moral science lesson we used to have yeah? and in schools like moral science lessons i'm sure in england also in scotland also they would be having a moral science lesson some uh in values ethics principles lesson shrimad bhagavatam is not like a moral science lesson yeah. it is beyond moral science it's transcendental literature so we are not hung up with good or bad good and bad is also within the moral morality of the society we are, we do definitely appreciate good but we are not hung up with good we are after this transcendental mood we are after the transcendental understanding the transcendental message so that is when life begins so coming to <clears throat> philosophy culture and etiquette <clears throat> any thoughts what what could be the most important in this philosophy culture and etiquette what could be the culture nara says culture etiquette, etiquette. <clears throat> the base of what is the base of culture what is the base of etiquette even living animal society even in i mean in human society and uh, may not be practicing any form of religion say but still there is that culture and etiquette how to deal with mother how to deal with sister how to deal with wife right there's that basic culture there's that basic etiquette there's that basic moral sense so what is the source or what is the basis or foundation of culture of eti- etiquette and of say philosophy who who lays the foundation of culture and etiquette is it philosophy laying the foundation or is it culture laying the foundation of philosophy aham sarvasya prabhavo who is the cause who is the ultimate source where does it stem from Arjuna was not lacking as such culture or the etiquette he was speaking on culture and etiquette it is a etiquette not to kill my grandfather what culture are you state setting krishna child women children will be exploited polluted and furthermore and all was arjuna philosophically a bit uh, wayward or culturally etiquette wise a bit wayward philosophically he was confused or wavered not in line and krishna did not tell him on the culture or etiquette part 
Krishna gave him the real philosophy, the proper philosophy, the genuine philosophy. And you see, for Krishna, it is the normal. It is the standard behavior. It is the standard philosophy. <clears throat> we see in society, there is culture, there is etiquette. Philosophy is a bit lacking, say. The proper philosophy. Uh, King Chitra Ketu, how could you resist? See, one thing is to prepare myself. Okay. I have to speak with, uh, say, my father, or I have to speak with a uh, uh, job center person, or I have to speak with my teacher. And I know that I don't get along well. And I know that there's going to be. So how much we prepare ourselves that I know I'm anticipating a call in half an hour and we don't click well. So there is going to be some, some friction. So I better not. I calm down. I calm down. We prepare ourselves a lot, right? I calm down. But in here, it happened sudden, right? King Chitra Ketu, Lord Shiva, their meeting, it wasn't like planned, okay, we go this way. Maybe, okay, yeah, we go and we see, we go, we take a diversion and we go via seeing Lord Shiva. Say. But it was he wasn't expecting Lord Shiva to be sitting and giving Srimad Bhagavatam with uh, Mother Parvati on his lap. So it was very sudden. Yeah. So... And this deeply ingrained was humility in him. This deeply ingrained. This natural, the standard behavior of a Vaishnava. Like it is said, right? <clears throat> when suddenly in night, if we are waken, woken up, when something happens very suddenly, what is inside comes out. So here also, he wasn't as such expecting a curse from Mother Parvati, but it just happened to get the curse. And he naturally accepted it. Not out of culture or etiquette. Yes, culture. If philosophically we are very strong, then the culture and etiquette we will maintain. But otherwise, if we are just maintaining culture and etiquette, but not philosophically properly strong, we can be very deviated in our pursuit of attaining Krishna. <clears throat> culture is very attracting. Many countries, many places, people, culture, language, food, very attracting. So our Krishna conscious culture, women dress so elegant, so beautiful, men dress nicely, and uh, the food, the singing, the chanting, the behavior, etiquette, everything very, very attractive. But us practicing Krishna consciousness, it is not like an Indian culture. Even though appears from comes from India, say, or like that. No? The Vedic culture, the Vedic etiquette, based on what? Shastras, the philosophy. So the philosophical standpoint, grounding, has to be very firm, has to be very strong. And when that is firm, we will be able to discriminate. We will understand what is the true etiquette, proper etiquette, the proper culture, and come about by living that culture and the etiquette. Just culture and etiquette may not be able to sustain us or may not be able to develop the desperation in our pursuit of attaining Krishna out of just culture and etiquette. As Prabhupada beautifully said, right? Philosophy without religion is mental speculation. And religion without philosophy. Now, if I may substitute the word religion with culture and etiquette, say. Please grant me this liberty. If I may substitute the word religion with culture and etiquette. Philosophy without culture and etiquette. Is very in the mind, mental platform, uh, to somewhat an intellectual platform. It's like mental speculation. Culture and etiquette without philosophy can become sahaja or sentimental without having that proper philosophy. So 
This is philosophy, the standard behavior of a Vaishnava. This is philosophy, Narayana Parasarve, Trinada Pi Sunichena, Tarura Pi Sahishuna. It is the proper philosophy, the right, <coughs> clear, proper understanding of the message of Mahaprabhu. The appearance, the advent of Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It is a Yugal Sarkar Mantra. It is a Rasmai Mantra, Prem Mantra. So that proper understanding and with that uh, understanding, we develop a mood, we build a mood, we build the right attitude and the right culture, the right etiquette and to bring about a desperation, to bring about a crying out. On this note, maybe I will take a <clears throat> pause if there are any questions, comments or clarifications or <clears throat> so, thank you, Prabhuji. Um, this is point of culture and etiquette. Uh, we see an example of uh, the the son of Drona punished. This this chapter, the first sort of pastime in the, the Bhagavatam, in one sense. Um, like. Perhaps we can see Draupadi, you know, she's not so much acting on a philosophical platform, but acting on a platform of culture and etiquette. You know, she very much, she doesn't want, she, she sees that this is the son of a Brahmin, therefore she tries to respect him as a Brahmin. Um, she doesn't want his mother to suffer more, etc. Um, whereas, you know, Arjuna and Krishna, they're presenting more the philosophical side of the argument. But nonetheless, because she maintains this culture and etiquette, you know, she's very noble, then Krishna respects that. And it seems like it, if the intellect isn't there, that it's not actually a defect. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice question. In the assembly of Vaishnavas, we want to please Vaishnavas, right? We desire to please them. In the assembly of Vaishnavas, how do we please them? By philosophical understanding or maintaining good culture etiquette? Sitting in with Vaishnavas, I should not be like, okay, instructing philosophy or this is the philosophy. With good, meek and humble. It says in that purport, right? Meek and humble. So with Vaishnavas, it is not to show them how many shlokas or this point, that point, and this philosophical, no. With Vaishnavas, we want to please them through good behavior, uh, culture, etiquette, being meek and humble and all. And how can we keep our, sustain ourselves for lifetime, lifetime, eternal lifetime, when we are more nicely tuned with philosophy? Now, how can we say that uh, Draupati was not so philosophical? Look, when in the assembly also disrobed, she was philosophical, even there, she was philosophical, but she was not exerting that Krishna, that philosophy. She was maintaining the culture and the etiquette, the decorum. Ah, Krishna is the supreme personality of God, and he decided and kind of putting forward based on that culture and etiquette, based on um, so founded or supported or with the Aadhar, based on that philosophy. So for us, practicing Krishna consciousness, philosophy is like for myself to understand the philosophy. How can I myself understand the message very nicely? It will be very difficult. It, will, it is a very dangerous position for a sadhaka to think that I am become a teacher now. I know Bhagavad Gita, I can teach Bhagavad Gita. I know Bhagavatam, I can teach Bhagavatam. I will, no, that's a very, very dangerous position position we don't want to tread on that so it is not teaching it is rather learning for myself say the philosophy and we please the Vaishnavas with proper culture with proper etiquette and also in as part of the culture and etiquette where we have to bring about philosophy we bring about philosophy as well to keep that sanctity so in that uh, again in that episode, na? very nice you raised this. 
someone in management can learn a lot from that episode is it not how to do a job so that even this is the, again the standard behavior of a vaishnava or krishna showing look how exalted my devotee arjuna is he worked in a way that neither draupadi is uh, upset nor bhima is upset that is real management how do you function in a way that neither devotees are upset nor preaching is upset and all all parties so that arjuna all parties satisfied how narayana parasarve trinada pi sunichena keeping krishna at the center or being driven by krishna not taking things in hand we want to be the instruments na so being driven by krishna so uh, arjuna not out of culture and etiquette philosophically he was fine culture etiquette in krishna yes he could understand what krishna is wanting what krishna is trying to say what should i do and then he was not hesitant he was very clear in his action and parvati uh, sorry draupadi as well showing us the culture and etiquette like um, uh, krishna sending subhadra and other queens wives of krishna when drop they met draupadi they were learning from draupadi the skills how to present it how women is such a uh, exalted personality is it you for men house is what bricks and walls generally i'm speaking same but you give the house to a woman she makes it a home she converts the chance from the house to a home so the wives of uh, krishna when draupadi went there she was uh, they were learning from him how to how can we serve krishna more nicely how can we serve krishna more nicely but at no point in their behavior in their presentation culture and etiquette we find that they were philosophically off they were not philosophically off you this world also the society we live in has some decency morality culture and etiquette what is heavily missing is the real philosophy the proper philosophy the philosophy for the heart real heart that is missing that that friendship is missing without this real philosophy and this us as practicing krishna consciousness if we can put forward that message of mahaprabhu maintaining the culture etiquette philosophy everything does that somewhat answer your question please any final thoughts or hi krishna prabhu thank you for a very nice class and very nice points i wonder in then with shastra da we can um, we can I heard this philosophy but then how to actually integrate it into our own self into our own very nice <clears throat> this is now i personally like this question very much and i i never want to come up with a okay straight answer for it i find this question very evolving what what is the difference between information knowledge and wisdom information knowledge and wisdom now king chitraketu was he aware of the philosophy yes did he know the philosophy yes and was he living the philosophy yes chitraketu he was informed as well he was aware as well he knew also and he lived also the philosophy for us for myself i'm aware i'm i've been informed you know to what extent I believe in but how much i live hardly any say hardly any and this gap has to be filled up this gap from information to knowledge to wisdom this gap has to be filled up ah, how deeply so please bring maybe on screen shrimad bhagavatam second canto third chapter text 11 this is the sutra sutra and this is the most sweetest easiest simplest the secured way to come to your question like how can we ingrain ourselves in that philosophy etavane va yajatam ihanishreya odaye 
भगवती अचलो भावो यद भागवत संगता सो टू थ्री इलेवन श्रीमद भागवतम एतावान एव यजताम यह निश्रेय होते तो क्वेश्चन इज दिस ओनली राइट दैट वी नो दिस फिलोसॉफी एज वेल बट हाउ कैन वी फॉर आवर सेल्स लिव दिस फिलोसॉफी और कीप दिस फिलोसॉफी राइट सो रीड द ट्रांसलेशन प्लीज पंचतत्वा प्रभु रीड and just check what is the word meaning of the word nishray ode the word meaning sir so which word meaning nishray yeah. asha mm. the highest benediction translation All the different kinds of worshippers of the multi demigods can attain the highest perfection of benediction, which is spontaneous attraction, unflinchingly fixed upon the supreme personality of Godhead, only by the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. The translation does not say by the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. Translation says what? Only by the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. And what do we want to attain? This spontaneous, unflinching attraction. Spontaneous, na? It was spontaneously he was cursed. He was cursed on the spot, spontaneously. And performing bhakti, we want this spontaneous, unflinching attraction. Nishreya odaye, the highest benediction. So we just knowing the philosophy is still not good enough. Informed of the philosophy is still not good enough. We have to live by the philosophy. there is no other option we have to become humble we want to become humble we desire to become humble and that can only happen when i see mahaprabhu as the most beautiful personality in this universe when i find my mahaprabhu as more dear to my life and soul when i find the practice the message of krishna consciousness the beauty of mahaprabhu only then i will want to become humble or i will be becoming humble or i can then attract the mercy the blessing of mahaprabhu to be humble without being humble we can never live the philosophy and this uh, krishna consciousness is ever increasing right so to the degree we become humble to that degree okay the realizations and we will find our intrigue will detachment will also come about if we are humble knowledge will also come about if we are humble the only way to be prideless is humility so this is seeing the devotion in others eh nishray hote hain all the worshipers of different demigods so we also so many things in our head so many desires and all everything but who is that who will make us uh, make us fixed up that yes the highest benediction is what un spontaneous unflinching attraction currently it is a blessing that we are uh, not we, we are flinched even in this material world we are flinched we are not so unflinching towards netflix it's a blessing we are not fully sold out to uh, youtube tiktok and all it's a blessing so who is going to make us very look radha sham sundar very attractive it is the pure devotee of the lord so when we associate when we pray when we value that association that moments association na sadhu sang sadhu sang sarva shastra ka lava matra sadhu sang sarva siddhi hoy so this is not like some play of words or poetry or made it up like that no this is the reality and when i really appreciate cherish so the kingdoms of golok vrindavan are not at all locked or the doors are not closed also i am closed and i need to open up i need to experience that desperation a sadhaka who is not experiencing desperation then uh, the krishna consciousness has to be checked out of it thank you very much for your kind attention and encouragement pray for your ever blessings and prachimat bhagavatam mahapuran ki shila prabhupad ki nitay gor premanandi